Hey guys, Shea Bear 1000 here. Today, behind me, is the battlefield. That's where the Seminole Indians had fought the government, the U.S. Army. And there was a slaughter in there, and we'll tell you more about that here in just a moment. Stick around, won't you? Alright guys, we are inside the Dade battlefield. Um, Monkey had a patient, what, 19 minutes from here, 13 miles. Yeah. So, and it was her last patient of the day, so I came with her today, so we can just stop here since we was down this way anyhow. Mm -hmm. So, but this is pretty interesting stuff here. Um, This tells you a little bit about it. Um, I can read it to you. Um, it says, that as you look around this tranquil setting dominated by ancient live oaks, resur what? resurrection ferns, palmettos, and long leaf pines with songbirds and woodpeckers, Flitting lately among the leaves, it can be difficult to imagine that more than 180 years ago, this was the scene of bloodshed, terror, and tragedy. On December 28, 1835, a U.S. Army column consisting of 107 officers and men under the command of, is that Brevet? Uh -huh. Major Francis Longhorn Dade. So we, that's the Dade, Dade Battlefield, it was named after him, <laughs> was ambushed at this place by 180 Seminole warriors, which were the Indians, uh -huh. led by Micanope, Alligator, and, Ju and Jumper, in a battle that lasted from early morning until mid-afternoon. All but three soldiers, including all of the officers, were killed. It was a defeat that shocked the nation, struck at the heart of the army, and led directly to the longest and most costly Indian war in American history. For the Seminoles, what, what came to be known as Dade's Battle was a resounding victory. Only three warriors lost their lives, and the attack sent a clear message to an American government bent on a policy of Indian removal that the Seminole people would not give up their homes without a fight. Its long-term consequences, however, were devastating. After seven years of warfare, most Florida Seminoles had been killed or captured and sent off to make new lives in the Indian Territory, far away in an unknown land now called Oklahoma. Hmm, that's interesting. I did not know that. Mm. See, they didn't teach us this in, no. in history. Uh, and unconquered remnant survived deep within the Everglades. The ancestors of today's proud Seminole and Miss uh, Mikasuki? Muskowski? Uh, tribes. Mikasuki tribes of Florida. We invite you inside the visitor center, which we're going in yep. now. Yeah, we're going to take a look go at in. It. But it's beautiful out here. You can hear mm -hmm. the birds chirping. Yeah, you see all kinds of stuff. So we're going to go check. There's a visitor center right there. We stepped in for a minute. Uh, monkey changed her clothes. Yeah. So we're going to go in the visitor center now. Yeah. We have the exact spots. Mm -hmm. When the army came back, as you can see, there's a little table over there. It's a reproduction of the map the army yeah. made. Yeah. 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 And, uh, and also, uh, the they marked the ground and then archaeological digs. So where we have our breastworks is where the breastworks were in the battle. Oh, it's right. not near this spot. This is exactly where yeah, spot. Yeah, that's right. right. So okay. another little bit of historical. Yeah. Hell, right? Yes. Hell, thank you very much. My pleasure, sir. sir. Man. Thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. He's our guy. like, I can give you a little talk about the weapons that uh, seems like I got them out here. Sure. All right. Well, like I tell people, the uh, 
like anything, it was a tool, and the tool was designed for what it was designed for, to be used the way it was designed. The military weapon of the day was the musket. The American soldiers were training with the musket because they were training to fight in Europe. At that time in history, we didn't get along with England, we didn't get along with France, we didn't get along with Spain, we were having trouble with, Me with uh, Mexico. The Alamo was only going to be two months after this battle. So they were, uh, the soldiers were training for European warfare because they figured they were going to fight a European war which in Europe you don't have this type of terrain. You get out into open areas. So that's where they used to line up on each side of the field, shoot at each other and so forth. Uh, so that's what this weapon is designed for. It's not designed for accuracy, it's designed for volume of fire. I want to get a lot of bullets down the field. <coughs> at 75 yards I can hit you where I want you. I want to hit you. 100 yards, I'm going to hit you but I can't promise where. After that, probably not going to hit you at all. And be very lucky if I do. Um, but this has, it, what it gives up for its accuracy, it gains in other things. The way they fired these weapons in the day, if you look at our little soldier guy, you can see he was wearing his coat during the battle, which was actually a big disadvantage because his cartridges were underneath his coat. He had to reach back here to get his cartridges. Mm. And what you would do, and some of the expressions you might have heard about battles, or, excuse me, you may have heard, come from these guns. Uh, this is called a prison. So I'm going to open that up. I'm going to reach around. I'm going to grab my cartridge. Cartridge is paper with gunpowder and a bullet in it. I'm going to rip the paper open with my teeth. To be in the Army, you had to have two teeth, one, upon, one up above the other. You can say you could rip it. Pour some of the gunpowder into the pan, close the prison, roll the musket over, put the rest of the gunpowder down the barrel, put the paper down the barrel, put the bullet down the barrel, and then ram it down with the rammer. Now, of course, you're doing all of this while the other guy is shooting at you. So, now, should everything go right, this is what's going to happen. Right now, I'm on half cock. That's the safety. The gun should not fire on half cock. You've heard the expression, going off half cocked. Okay? So, we go to full cock, and when we pull the trigger, we've got a piece of flint here. When flint hits steel, it makes a spark. On this thing, what it's going to do is it's going to flip that open and make the spark. With any luck, some of that spark is going to fall in the pan, where we will get a flash in the pan. There's a little hole drilled in the side of the barrel. Hopefully, some of that spark will go through the hole and ignite the gun, and the gun goes off. There's always a delay. Sometimes it's actually as much as a couple of seconds. It can be up to three minutes, okay, so, which makes these things a little dangerous and which makes a flash in the pan a dangerous situation. You don't know when the gun's going to go off after you pull the trigger. The other disadvantage of this type of either one of these is some of that burning gunpowder can be down that barrel when you pour your next charge down, okay, which could set off the gunpowder in your hand. That's why when you see in motion pictures, you'll see the guy with his, uh, he'll have a powder horn and he'll open it up with his teeth and go like this. Not a chance. Hmm. Not a chance. Because first, you can't measure how much you're putting down there. Second, if that, there is a hot spark down there, you're going to blow your hand off, if you're lucky, if that's as far as it goes. <laughs> but um, a good soldier, he can crank out at least four rounds a minute. Okay? I know a lady who can do five. She always beats us in every competition. She can do five rounds. Awesome. She's good. Um, but remember, we're not worried about how many rounds we can get off. Oh, excuse me, how accurate our rounds are. We <coughs> want to get a lot of rounds downfield. So that's the advantage because this is a smooth bore. I can almost drop the musket ball down there. Also, it has another advantage. If uh, it starts getting so dirty I can't get the musket ball down there, I can throw a fistful of buckshot down there. Mm -hmm. Because it's a shotgun. Basically, it's a 10-gauge shotgun is what I've got here. So this has those advantages. Of course, it does have the accuracy disadvantage. The natives were using their hunting weapons. Now, they were very, very good shots because they had to be. Gunpowder and lead was hard to come by for these guys. So they couldn't afford to miss. So they were very, very good shots. They got it through trade. They got all this stuff through trade. Some of the trade was illegal, but they were doing it anyway. Like I tell people, it's illegal to trade in drugs, but people do it even today. So, But um, 
the firing mechanism is exactly the same, but being that it's a smaller caliber, it's not using as much gunpowder. So it has that advantage. Plus, it's got the grooves in the barrel. It's rifled. Rifled bore. Exactly. So, uh, but the disadvantage to the rifled bore is getting that bullet down mm -hmm. there. All right, because it's got a, it's catching those grooves as it goes down. That's what okay. spins it like a football when it comes right, exactly. out. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you've thrown a football. Mm -hmm. You know, if you can get that nice spin on it, right. it goes nice and straight, nice and far. Okay. Same thing with this. You get that spin on it, it's a lot more accurate. I can pro, uh, I can, I, I bullseye at about 200 yards, and I'll grant you that it was probably most of that's pretty pure luck. But, <laughs> yeah. uh, but I can hit you at 300 yards. Oh, and yeah. I can't promise where, but I can, a, a human sized target, I can hit at 300 yards. And uh, and like I said, these guys, because it was their hunting weapon, I'm sure they were just as accurate with it. So they, uh, that's their advantage. But the disadvantage that comes with this is black powder is very dirty. And the more you shoot, the more clogged up the, the weapon becomes. After about 10, 12 shots, you're actually to the point where you have to clean this thing because you just can't get the bullet down there anymore. So what... Uh, what happens is you've got a very, very expensive club. Okay? In mm. fact, that's one of the reasons that this was put on there, oh. was to protect it. But, um, so that's the disadvantage. I, and it's also a slower because I'm jamming that bullet down. It's three rounds per minute on average these guys are going to get off. Uh, plus, you've got to remember, in a battle, I don't care who you are. You're nervous, you're shaking, and everything like that. So that's going to slow you down a little bit, too. And like you said, you know, you're trying to hunker down and load that weapon while, while the other guy's bullets are too. whizzing past your ear. Exactly. And to the natives in the battle, they weren't stupid. They knew these guys, the, about, a thousand, about 100 yards was their effective range. They could hit you at 200 yards. So they stayed out of range of the rifle, accuracy range of the rifle. Mm -hmm. Or excuse me, the musket. Um, this is a six-pound cannonball. Okay, and I'll let you hold on to it and be careful. Let's get some heft. Now, that's solid shot. That's good, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. And that, the, it was designed to, uh, to basically knock things down, put holes in things, put it in, you know, if you're on a ship or something or you've got a fortress. It really wasn't used effectively anti-personnel. Mm. But uh, they would skip shot it. That's one thing they would try to do, skip it across the ground. Mm. You know, it's a good way if you, if you guys were lined up in front of you get a few. But again, the natives weren't stupid. They didn't stand in front of the cannon. All right. Mm -hmm. So what they were trying to do was hit the trees and get the splinters mm -hmm. to cause damage. These were artillery soldiers. Okay. Mm. The, um, Dade, Major Dade was an infantry officer. Most of his small contingent of infantry soldiers and he went down right in the beginning of the battle. So to be in artillery in those days, you actually were the smarter guys who were in artillery because you had to have been educated, you've got to be able to do math, you've got to be able to do geometry and all that stuff. It wasn't like they were stupid, it's just they weren't trained for the kind of battle that they were found themselves in. Mm. So, but as I point out, this was found right around here. Uh, we can't guarantee 100%, but it makes pretty good sense that this was fired during the battle. And you just held on to something. That so a it could be authentic. Yes. And this guy, some soldier, held on to in the last few moments of his life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, because why would that be out here? You know? Exactly. Who's going to put it there and hope right. someone may find it? <laughs> yeah. Right. You know, so. But yes. Yeah, so. Something. Yes. It's pretty, pretty uh, unique that we have this. These are usually very hard to. Right. We really don't see them mm -hmm. very often. Uh, by the Civil War, the firing mechanism has changed on the gun. Right now, uh, at, in the 1830s, uh, they have developed a new type of ignition system for the gun. Mm -hmm. And it's driving me insane, as I told the other people. I can't remember the guy's name. I should. Um, he was from Scotland, and he loved bird hunting. But the problem was, in Scotland, it's so wet mm -hmm. that the gunpowder in the frizzen always got wet, and then the gun wouldn't fire. So... Uh, he developed, uh, the, you know the paper caps you played with mm -hmm. them when you were a kid? He developed that idea. They went through a bunch of different ideas, a bunch of different little changes, until finally they came up with this little uh, copper cap with fulminate of mercury in it. The, the, uh, the lock is almost the same. 
except they've replaced this with a little nipple to put the cap on, and this has been replaced with a hammer. Mm -hmm. And that led the way to where you could finally get, like, Colonel Colt inventing his uh, Colt revolver, because now you didn't have to have one of these big bulky things on it. You could just use the hammer to hit those caps. Mm -hmm. So that's what led to that, and, of course, that's going to lead to automatic weapons and everything else. So. They were known as a repeating rifle when the automatics come out. Yes. Yeah, in fact, the Army, being the Army, was very slow. The Henry rifle was, out, was, was available during mm -hmm. the Civil War, and there were actually uh, people who carried it, but they, 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 uh, it was privately owned. They purchased it themselves uh, because the Army felt uh, the same reason they didn't use the Gatling gun was the idea was we're going to waste a lot of ammunition just because they're going to be keep firing too fast, so let's slow down their rate of fire by still making them use a muzzle loader. You know, mm. well, yeah, they thought they would take their time more, right? You know, as yeah. to well, same way hunting, I would rather use a single shot. Oh yeah. Then you know, because I will take my time more. I've got one shot. You've got that one. I, I've hunted with these. I've hunted with those. And you're absolutely right. And what really gets you is if you've ever. I don't know if you've ever hunted with uh, with a flintlock. No, I've hunted with those before. With the flintlock, mm -hmm. the flint. Yeah. Yeah. As you know. You know, you get that big flash when you pull the trigger. Yeah. But you've got to keep that eye open because yeah. you've got to track that animal. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. So yes. uh, that's what I tell people. I can take a deer with a bow a lot easier than I can with this. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I'm the same way. Yeah. yeah. I, that, uh, if you've taken deer with that, I think, to me, you, you've earned uh, some bragging rights. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Any questions? Uh, if you have any questions. No. Covered everything. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Where are you from, by the way? Never. A Cypress canoe. This in night in June of nineteen sixty four this canoe was found in the Withlacoochee River. Oh wow. About one mile west of the old Fort King Road. It was believed to be over 125 it is believed to be over 125 years old. And is made from a cypress log, 20 feet long, 20 inches wide, and 10 inches deep. Evidence of of use of the auger, foot adds, and other uh, white man's tools indicates that this canoe was probably built by U.S. soldiers. Wow. And adds is something like an axe. Ah, uh, that's cool, eh? Imagine finding that. That would be so neat. Really cool. Awesome. Mm -hmm. And this is a cool diorama here. I know there's some glare, but. Mm. Yeah. Did you see this? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's nice. And here's some musk balls. So people can read, they can widen their, uh, There's the paper cartridges he was talking about. Camera. You would rip open with your teeth. That's a musket tool cool. right there. A lot of history. And there's some flint that you would put right in there. That's the flint, and once it scrapes down onto that metal, that's what, what would cause the spark. So that flint, flint napping. So they would like use other pieces of rock to nap that, to break them off so they could get them to fit in there. And that's what flint napping is. Or so I'm told, not that I know anything about it. You know nothing. <laughs> Isn't that awesome. something? Mm -hmm. it took a long time just to, you'd have to move quickly. Yeah, like, like he said, you're scared, you're shaking. Yeah, yeah. Look at that. Isn't that something? Yeah. That is cool. Really cool. We're not far from this. <laughs> no, we're about 55 minutes. Yeah. 50 minutes. Yeah. So. Something. Well, maybe not even. No, we're not that about far from About 45 minutes, I think. About 45 minutes, mm -hmm. yeah. Have history like this, you know? Right. It would have been more fun. <laughs>
There's a buckle. These are old buttons, probably off uniforms. These are old plates. Um, they're called rifle butt plates. Sorry, Billy. They would go on the end, on the butt of the rifle that goes up against the shoulder. There's a fastener. And this is some lead shot, also known as buck shot. As the gentleman was explaining, you can put that down into a smooth bore barrel uh, rifle. You can grab a handful of that and put it down in there, and that scatters out. So we also call our shotguns up north, because we're Yankees, we call them scatter guns, because you can miss something by a foot and still hit it. Because you got a bunch of them spreading out, and the farther away you are, the more that, that it would spread out. Hmm. How come you know so it's much part about of a, those? Part of a container. About what? Your gun stuff. Um, shea beer. <laughs> <laughs> I want to tell the truth, huh? Um, let's read about this one. <laughs> um, this 1816 musket, typical of guns used in the Second Seminole War. Socket bayonet, which is that right there, that would go on to the end of where the barrel would stick out. And uh, that was typical of the Second Seminole War period. Uh, the sword with a brass eagle head, that's up here. It's brass, so if you polish that up, which you would never want to do, it would look like gold. We all know what brass looks like, but for those of you that don't. Uh, popular during the American Federalist pist uh, pisted, yeah, Federalist period, it was probably used by an officer rather than a common soldier because the common soldiers didn't have this ornate um, ends on them and stuff. That's really ornate, and uh, it would just have like a just a guard around there, and possibly even a steel or copper guard uh, rather than the the brass. The Seminoles used to play this game, and uh, we we play similar games like this to this day. Yes, it is. Can I see that doll? I think it's pretty. Huh? Yeah. Let's take a couple still images. Alright. This is where the battle was. And they died. And they died. And they died. <laughs> yeah. Short and sweet. Short and sweet, yeah. This is where the battle was and they died. So, what's going on with my camera, babe? Um, same thing as yesterday. When we was at the tower. Yeah. It's unresponsive. I got it taking still images now, but as soon as I put it on to, uh, to video mode, mm -hmm. uh, it's not responding. Mm -hmm. It's not doing anything. And once you click it to hit record, mm -hmm. then it becomes unresponsive. you got to pull the battery out and reset it. Mm -hmm. Now, yesterday, it started working fine as soon as we got to the truck. Yeah. So let's see what happens today. Yeah, and I used it inside, so... It was working inside? Yeah, mm-hmm. So, and this is our newest one. Yeah. Yeah, so... Mm. Yeah, there's the wind again. Yeah. Wow, isn't that cool? Seminole wind, they call it. Yep. Huh. See, it took still images. Yeah, it took sure. still yeah. images. Oh, wow. See? Mm-hmm. I took a couple in night vision mm. because it is a spectrum camera. So when you do that in the daytime, it's taking different spectrums of light photos. Uh-huh. Uh and you always take at least two in succession. 
So you know if that, you see something. Yeah, if you get something in there and it's in two or three photos, you know it's nothing. Mm -hmm. But if you get in like within one second of each other and it's in one frame and not another, then it could be something. Mm. But hmm. yeah, see, it's it's you know. Hmm. Hmm. Wow. Yeah, and we found out yesterday that there was a guy that was killed not far from the store that we were at, right? Yes, that's part of the ghost story, don't yeah. you? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Stay tuned for that. Can't ruin it. And then it won't shut off. It will not respond once you hit the record button to start filming. Oh, no. Yeah, see? Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's not responding. It's not doing anything. Hmm. Nothing. I did that yesterday. Yeah, but as soon as we got out to the truck, it started mm -hmm. working fine. Yeah. And I checked it before we came at the truck. Mm -hmm. Before we went into the visitor center. Yeah. I checked it, mm. and it checked out fine. Hmm. Everything was working. We've tried two different batteries. I got a third battery, but I know it's not the battery. Both batteries are in the green, but so it's not a battery causing it. No. It's not mm -mm. a battery issue. It's not a memory card issue. Mm-mm. -mm. So... What is it, babe? Something spooky? <laughs> I don't know. It just seems like whenever we get around someplace like this, this thing don't want to work. No. And I bought it for that. So if it don't want to work, I mean, it's kind of useless. Right, me. right. I got a $200 picture-taking camera. Yeah. <laughs> but we'll have to see when we get back to the truck if it works or not. All righty. Here we go. We're going to go down this path and see what we can see. Stay tuned. Oh, what's happening now, babe? Okay. I've got this voice recorder. Alright. Still got CISO on the back of it. Mm. Uh, put new batteries in this thing last night to do some EVP sessions out here, right? Because I knew it was coming here today. And here's the power switch. Can you see that? Yep. It's off, right? Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to flip it on. It's dead. It's dead. Hmm. And my camera won't work. And the camera's not working. Mm -hmm. the, the new one. It's only yeah. a couple months old. Yeah. And everything was charged because we planned to do this today. So, so how, do, how do you feel about yesterday when you told me you got too much camera equipment. I said, you can never have enough. You said, that's too much. Well, he was bringing all this stuff, and I thought we'd have to walk like two miles to doesn't, the middle of nowhere. Doesn't matter. You can always tell him to take a break. <laughs> right. The thing of it is, is it's a good thing we had the third camera yesterday, right? Yeah. Which we do not have today because she was on my ass about bringing too much stuff. Now she's <laughs> wanting that third camera, and it's 45 minutes away from here. Yeah. Right, let's try this one. Okay, this one's on. Uh-huh. This one's working. Oh, good. Both batteries are out of the same pack in mm. both of these. Hmm. And they both kicked on last night. Those were brand new batteries, too. Yeah, they're brand new. Yeah, they, they came have... out of the same pack. Yeah. This one went dead. As mm. soon as I turned it on, it lit up and shut off. This mm. one's still on. Hmm. <laughs> All right. Okay. Are we going to try something? Yeah. Is there someone standing out here with us? Is it Jumper? Or Alligator? Or Dave? Okay, now let's play this back. Bring it over here close to you. someone standing out here with us? Is it Jumper? Or Alligator? Or Dave? Nothing on that. We need to do it down this way more. Um. What is that? The battery. 
I'm trying to get it on this camera. The battery's down almost a half percent. Oh, jeez. Look at that. Mm-hmm. Wow. Hmm. What do you think? Try it again. There's the wind. As soon as this wind goes by. Wow. Feel it's that. hard to do EVPs outside, but if you, if you can, if you're trained to hear them, you can, a lot of good EVP specialists can pick stuff out. And that's also, since a ghost, a spirit does not have a voice box, they can't actually speak. They have to make sounds out of what's around them. Right. You follow me like a so, leaf rustling, they can make that, they can, uh, you know, turn that into what may sound like something to try to communicate with you. Maybe the wind. See, well now we got, yeah. we got a tractor running over here. Mm -hmm. They're mowing. We're going to go mow. It's dressing in. Is there any Seminole warriors out here or any United States soldiers? Wind just picked up. Mm-hmm. That's why I like the other one. You can put your you can, uh, the other one you can listen in real time. You can put your headphones on mm -hmm. and ask questions. If you catch an EVP, you can hear it. Mm. Is there any Seminole warriors out here? Or any United States soldiers? Okay. Off we go. Huh. Hmm. Huh. Wow, eh? Recording? Yeah. Let's slow down. Did you explain to him? No. This is where one of the officers fell, right here. He died right here, in that very spot. Oh, you need to put your box on there. I don't have my box, I got a voice recorder. No. Yeah, so in this area, you know, is where this battle happened. And uh, only three Seminoles were killed and five injured. This was the second phase of the battle. Yeah, the yeah. second phase, mm -hmm. which that's when they went around. See, the battle was actually over about noon, but at about 2, see, at about 2 p.m., most of the force of 108 men mm -hmm. had been killed. The wounded were dispatched by the enemy after the battle ended. That means they went around mm -hmm. to anyone that was living or breathing and either cut their throats, shot them, they killed him as they laid there, so dying. So two got very lucky. Three. three. Yeah, there's, there is three, three men survived. Even if you played possum, they were checking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. So this is Lieutenant Mudge. He fell here. He was killed right here. Okay, so what happened? Sorry about the train in the background. The scene of ambush, which is where we're at, um, remained deserted for seven weeks. Finally, on February 20th, 1838, I think it says six, but I thought it was 1838 when it happened. 1836. Okay. An expedition under General Gaines arrived here, identified the bodies, and gave them proper burial with military rights, placing officers' bodies 
on the east side of the trail and the enlisted men in two graves within the what is that redoubt redoubt the small cannon was retrieved from a nearby pond in which the Seminoles had thrown it they mounted it muzzle down as a monument to the dead almost six years later on August 15 1842 the officers and men of the army contributed funds to pay for a second interment and Dade's silent command now rests in the National Cemetery at St. Augustine. Wow. Isn't that cool? Eerie. Mm. So I'm guessing this is another officer up here. Let's go check this out. Mm -hmm. I got to keep shutting this off because I'm trying to preserve battery life. Well, I'll keep it rolling for a minute. with the wind again. Oh, here we go, look. Major Dade. Right here is where Major Dade fell. So Major Dade, and also the county, Dade County, named mm -hmm. after him. Right. Um, this, this was the head honcho. He was, I believe, the first to fall, wasn't he? Yes. Because they came into here, and of course, all this stuff wasn't mm -hmm. here. It all looked like that like and like that so when they was traveling see this was the road yeah this was the road they were traveling on yeah and he was hit here yeah. he was the first one to go down yeah very very interesting sad so eerie you but go interesting. there and then that guy fell and then the other guy fell down that yeah way. and then you know all the other men were down in from here on yeah. people were were killed there were bodies laying yeah. everywhere yeah unbelievable so we're standing where he died yes mm -hmm. he 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 was killed right here i'm guessing he may, may have been shot off a horse because mm -hmm. usually the officers rode the horses mm -hmm. so he was shot right in this area but this is where his body was right. so we have another placard here i'll read to you Suddenly, men reeled and fell to a deadly fire poured upon them from behind the trees and palmettos. Half of Major... By the way, that fire, honey, I was teasing you. It's gunfire. That's what they're talking about. So I was teasing her about a gas line. <laughs> anyway... I don't think there was gas back then. Half of Major Dade's command lay dead or wounded. Major Dade and Captain Fraser were killed nearby, which we just came from up that way. You can see one of their... That's uh, Captain Fraser's right there. His, uh, his monument where he fell. Uh... And three of the six surviving officers were wounded. Those men remaining after the first onslaught sought cover from which they might return the fire. After several rounds from their cannon, the Indians withdrew a short distance. The soldiers hastily threw together a low readout or read out, whatever. It's like that little, little thing we showed you at the beginning uh, of logs cared for their wounded and collected ammunition from the fallen so this area we're standing in right here was all just littered with bodies you know okay let's move on okay this structure here guys you've heard me trying to pronounce I don't know if it's redoubt or red out um, this is what they have cut down when the battle was getting fierce um, of course, this is not the actual one, but this is what they would have done. They, <coughs> excuse me, they cut down the trees, and they made the, they took these logs, and this is what they were hiding in, trying to take cover from fire. And they would have been firing like through there, and they would have been laying down real low. So that's what that's what they would have made was something similar to this. You know, may have been bigger, may have been smaller, but this gives you an idea of what it was for. It's a reproduction. Yeah, see right here, it tells you on the on the sign here. 
you know, constructed. This is, of course, a reproduction. But by the last remaining soldiers in Dade's command before they were vanquished, excuse me, by a superior force of Seminole warriors on this spot, December 28, 1835. So this is the spot where they built it. So they was coming our direction down this path we just walked down where you saw the the falling officers uh, monuments they come down here and right here in this spot is where they would have built one of these and also after the battle was over the second onslaught at 2 p.m. the uh, Seminoles went around and uh, finished off any of the other soldiers that were breathing or may still have been alive and they would have done it right here this is where the rest of them ha has been killed right in here in this very spot now this sign is telling us that it was intentionally left unmowed to more closely resemble natural appearance at the time of Dade's battle so this is the stuff guys that they were crawling through and laying in and bleeding and and uh, I mean you know if if I got down inside in there you would never see me yeah. and them Indians man they they could get down in there and they were laying down and then you know on on, on you know the command then they just started firing you would never see them you couldn't see someone laying in there no you know right yeah. huh no and you know, I mean, and, and then all the trees that were here, because like I said, this is this all wasn't here. Uh -uh. All this property here, there was no roads over there, no railroad tracks. All this property looked just like that right there. And uh, we crossed a couple bridges over there. They weren't there. I mean, if there was water in them, it was December, could have been, you know. Uh, you know, they had to trudge through that stuff, you know. it's It's just... You know, what they had to do is just amazing. Okay, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video, you know, of a little bit of history down here in Florida of the Seminoles and uh, what happened with with the, uh, you know, the U.S. government and the Seminoles and the battles somewhat of uh, that took place. It just, it just amazes me of some of the things, you know, that people had to go through you know to fight for their lives and for their you know for their land like the Seminoles uh, but eventually the Seminoles they were defeated but so anyway guys thanks again for watching I appreciate it and uh, I'm gonna say Shea Bear 1000 the myth man legend I'm gone for now bye bye guys take care no fucking way Okay, so monkey's camera we was having problems with through the whole time. Can you see that in there? Yeah. Is now working. Okay, so monkey's camera we was having problems with through the whole time. Can you see that in there? Yeah. Is now working. As soon as we get in the truck. We were right over here about... 40 feet yeah and she tried this one again and it wouldn't work I got in the truck turned it on same as yesterday as soon as we got by the truck it started working is that weird and you guys seen I showed him you know that yeah. it wasn't working it wasn't yeah. responding nope it wasn't working and I now tried. it's working I turned it off oh, battery level low hey guys never mind <laughs> Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed this um, video of... <laughs> I know, but... 